name's Nikki. Um, I am in, as Loz has said, medical menopause. Um, I was diagnosed with secondary breast cancer into my bones in April 2018. Uh, it seems like only last year, but it was ages and ages ago. Um, so, yeah, I was actually going through IVF at the point of my diagnosis. Um, which obviously failed, and the body's an amazing thing. It knows when there's something wrong. Um, so I was going through all of that, and then um, I, went, I found um, one of my lumps in my right breast. I'm quite a lumpy person anyway. I started to grow, and it was aching, and it, was just, it just wasn't quite right. And my IVF nurses were like, oh, no, don't worry, it's fine. It's just all the hormones we're pumping into you. And I was like, no, I really don't think it is. So I went along to the GP, and immediately I looked, they looked at me and said, yeah, no, we don't like this at all. So went along um, and fast-tracked. Literally, within two weeks, I was told IVF had failed. Um, I had primary breast cancer. And the pain that I was experiencing in my back was actually cancer as well. So it was in basically every bone in my body. So I was admitted straight away because we thought that the, um, the, the cancer in the lower spine was actually causing spinal cord compression because I was struggling to walk. Um, and then, yeah, that was when reality hit that, hang on a minute, this is incurable and it's really quite serious. So... I was admitted, and then I was actually due on my period that day. And they said, this is the last period you're going to have. That's nice. Yeah, I was like, brilliant. <laughs> so I basically lost everything. So did they tell you straight away that you could expect to be in medical menopause? Yeah, but that's pretty much as far as they told me it would go. So I was like, okay, okay brilliant. No more tampons. Yeah. Save a shitload of so money. you didn't know what that actually meant? No idea. Yeah, that's, I think no that's idea. the same. And was it the same for you, Lydia? Can you explain to the lovely audience exactly what brought you to Menopause World? Sure. So um, I was 24 when I was diagnosed with a rare form of womb cancer. And the treatment I was put on was Solidex, which I think you're very aware of, um, which is an injection that uh, puts you in a medical, men medical menopause. Um, but because it was part of the treatment, my doctor actually talked about it quite a lot with me. Um, and they did it to try and preserve my ovaries uh, and maybe my womb at the time, which didn't happen because treatment didn't work. But um, I found the doctor, my doctor, quite helpful. We didn't really talk about sex much. Um, it was all revolved around fertility, but I was part of the decision that brought me there. Um, and then I was kind of left to work out what that meant for kind of my symptoms and sex life whilst I was on treatment myself, um, which was mainly just lube. We love the lube, guys. <laughs> All the lube over here. Um, but what symptoms? So, you know, you said you weren't so prepared, Nikki. Mm. Did you, you were talked through quite a lot about it. But were there any symptoms that really knocked your socks off and like, hang on, I had no idea that this was going to be the case for menopause? What was it that blew you away? I'm sure there's a list of like, as long as my little arm. But... <laughs> yeah, there, there, there really, really is. There's so many. And I think when you think menopause, you immediately go hot flushes, mm -hmm. which the joys. We, yeah, everyone in this I've room. had a coffee today, which was not wise. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a sweaty tablet. <laughs> Apologies in advance. So we, we, all, we all know about that one. And we all, you know, we've all heard of that. And, you know, the other ones like, like memory loss and confusion and things like that. But what they do not prepare you for is the dry foof. Mm. Now, you know, for a young person as well, and I'm, I'm just newly married, you know, like I've, you know, I've been married five years, I should be having a sex life. So... To just not even be told at all about that and then, you know, go to try one day and I'm, you know, you end up in tears because it's painful and you don't, you don't understand what's happening. And you feel, I don't know about any of you guys, but you feel like, oh, like, I'm a failure. Like, I yeah, can't 100%. just do a basic function yeah. of getting a willy. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you, but you're not only letting, you know, it's not only traumatic for you, but it's traumatic for your partner as well. Yeah. You know, as a, as a wife, I feel like I'm, I'm not fulfilling my, my duties as a wife and I'm letting my husband down. That's tough. What about for you, Lydia? Yeah, and I was um, single and 24 and dating at the time. So most of the sexual encounters I had were with people I'd known for about an hour. Uh, <laughs> where the conversation is... No, it's not as easy to talk about. Um, so you just kind of get the lube out and hope they don't have a fragile ego. Uh, which, when I was 24, and a lot of the boys were 24, they all did. Uh, it's got better with age. Um, 
But a lot of the advice out there was kind of for people who were married, uh, people who were straight, um, and I'm bi. And I mean, I found found find it easier with women because I feel comfortable talking to them, and yeah, there's less penetration. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of the advice out there is kind of for older people who are settled, feel comfortable with the people they're having sex with, not for people out on the town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, I can relate. Can yeah. relate. Um, so other than the aforementioned, yeah. what have you found the most challenging aspect in dealing with your menopause? Has it been talking to other people about it, finding support, or has it been mostly the physical aspects and the impacts on your life? I actually felt that one of the most difficult things, because I'm out of the menopause now, luckily uh, I've finished Solidex and kind of recovered my ovaries. I don't have a woman. Woohoo for Lydia's ovaries! Woo. Welcome back into the room! <laughs> But one of the things I noticed was um, the sort of depression it put me in, which I wasn't really told about or prepared for. And um, it was the sort of low-level depression that is easy to not notice or think about. It wasn't like, I, you know, I'd been diagnosed with cancer, so there were points where I'd been really depressed, and it wasn't like that. And it was only when I came off treatment that I noticed my happiness slash sadness came back, and I'd been living in, like a cloud of like low level depression where I didn't feel up and I didn't feel down and life was just less enjoyable. And I think I struggled with that because that was not, I didn't notice until I came out of it that I had been living like that for a year. How about you, Nick? It's a tricky one for me. I think that the, the main problem I have is people that aren't going through it who don't understand it. Yeah. So... You know, when I'm at work, for example, and I'm having a hot flush and I'm, I'm literally, like, sweat is pouring off me, and I go, my colleague will look at me and she'll go, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm just having a hot flush. And then someone else in the room will go, oh, yeah, it's really hot in here. And I'm like, oh, you just don't get it. And it's trying to explain to other people that aren't in this boat how it feels. And, you know, if you're halfway through a conversation with someone and then you completely lose what you're trying to say and you feel stupid... And in then trying to explain that to someone who doesn't understand it, it's very hard. So it can be quite isolating to people that don't understand. Yeah, because that's, with my menopause, that's exactly what I found, exactly what you've said. It's like when you talk about people who, who haven't been through menopausal symptoms and you explain a hot flush, you think, oh, you get a bit hot and sweaty. No, you no. don't. <laughs> you melt from the inside out. And it is all-consuming and it makes you feel anxious and uncomfortable. Mm, yeah. And I, I, I really did feel myself, I, I think you guys might be able to relate, becoming quite introverted and not wanting to put myself in certain situations for fear that that would happen at that time. Yeah. For someone who makes a lot of their living in the public, trust me, that's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> Um, so I, I would agree with you on that one. I really struggled with that stuff. And the brain fog. I used to remember yeah. everyone's face their names. Not so much anymore. <laughs> so if you come and cuddle me, you're like, we met like five times. I'm not being an arsehole. <laughs> I'm in menopause. <laughs> Be kind. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your stories, ladies. Can we get a round of applause? Thank you. <laughs> Woohoo! You did fabulous.